Here is Ray in one of my favorite cities that I can't go to. You're always invited to my house, Rush. San Francisco. Well, yeah, it's getting to your house that would be the challenge. I love San Francisco. I I, I guess it's kind of falling apart now with all the homeless and the urine and the puke everywhere. But still, their part is just it's just gorgeous. I got the new Apple TV, and they've got screensavers that are actual video made by helicopters and drones. Golden Gate Bridge. And I've been to the South Tower, top South Tower, Golden Gate Bridge. It's the most fascinating thing I've done. One of just downtown, get down into well, not downtown, down under the South Tower at Fort Point. It's just they don't let you go there now. It's Homeland Security, I think. But anyway. I always love getting calls from San Francisco because it's the only way I'll ever visit there is pretending I'm there when I'm on the phone with somebody. It's Ray, and finally you're up. How are you, sir? Good, sir. You know this whole Mizzou thing uh, also uh, points towards uh, Ben Carson, unfortunately. You know, these these young minds full of much, these kids, what the left likes to call useful idiots, what they're protesting is the very people that they say support them, which is the, the Democrat Party, the, the racist left in this country, and and. It's just ridiculous. The, if they knew their history, they would know that slavery was defeated in the Civil War, and the only remnant that remains systematically in, in the system in the United States is the Democrat Party. Right. It uh, all the way comes all the way up to Byrd and, and all this Democrat machinery that thinks that you have to have a white overlord, rich white overlord, and you can't have any kind of free thought. And Ben Carson is, is the epitome of it. If you dare leave the socialist left plantation in this nation they send the dogs out after you to destroy you or bring you back well, is that ever right? possibly if you are conservative african-american or conservative woman they are going to try to kill you absolutely reputation career they're going to try to take you out you represent a huge threat to them african-american conservative Female conservative, what a threat. You're, you're exactly right. Let me ask you a question. I just, during the break, I read a piece at the New Yorker, and it's some guy saying, okay, folks, it's about time we got serious and finally embraced political correctness instead of making fun of it. Because look at what it's accomplishing. Meaning Mizzou. Great achievement. What a wonderful thing that's happening here. And we need to embrace this. And it's a it's a it's an article written for leftists. <laughs> it's an article written for Democrats. Time to embrace political correctness. Well, if we embrace embrace political correctness, then we basically vacate the position that we have free thought, any sort of freedom. What these kids are basically saying that they want freedom from isn't it slavery or racism. It's any type of personal responsibility. Well, I know, I know. In fact, with the biggest the biggest laugh about this is to listen to these kids, these children, which is what they are. They're still effectively kindergartens in terms of their maturity, kindergartners and maturity and attitudes, demanding their freedom, demanding their free freedom to do what? What are they being denied the opportunity to do? They can do anything they want to do. There aren't any limits on them. What the hell are they talking about? Who's denying them freedom? What a freedom to have never ending A's, freedom to have no student debt, freedom to have to not have to pay tuition. What the world do they mean by freedom? Where the hell are they oppressed? This is you're you're raising a great question. It's it's and it's built off mine. How in the world can there be all of this oppression in places run by the Democrats? Universities, cities, towns run by liberal Democrats. Why is it that these young children feel so oppressed? And so denied and so shackled doesn't make sense to me. No, let me explain. I, look, you know, I lived in Sacramento. I went to San Francisco quite a bit. And I, I really liked it. It's a beautiful place. It really is. And I did go to the top of the South Tower, the Golden Gate Bridge. After I saw the movie, A View to a Kill, the Bond movie. And I, I was uh, friends with uh, law enforcement in Sacramento, and I put in touch with somebody at the California Highway Patrol who arranged with the bridge authority. And how did I get up there? I walked up the cables. No, I'm just kidding. There's an elevator inside. This. <laughs> you take a golf, tart, golf cart out to the, to the South Tower, and you go in a little door, and you get in an elevator that 
is open. It's not enclosed. And it holds three people. I had an old-fashioned video camera, Super 8 video camera that was in a case. I had to put that on my head and hold my arms straight up so that all three of us could fit in this elevator. The elevator takes you not to the top. takes you 30 feet from the top. Then you have to climb a ladder. And there's a hatch, like on a submarine that opens. That pops open. You climb, and then you're on the top of the South Tower. Well, you're not at the top. You're not at the saddles where the cables go over, but you're, you're, you're there. They don't let you go up there because they claim you'll get vertigo. If you, if you go to the absolute highest point, well, they won't let you go. But there was not a cloud in the sky that day. There was no fog that day. Something in 86, I guess it was, maybe 87. It might have been the spring of 1988. I don't know when. But I stayed up there two or three hours. Didn't want to leave. And and I uh, could see everything from up there that day. And then had to go back down those that ladder, 30 feet, get in that elevator. And when you're in, it's dark in there. There's no lights inside that. You can hear it creaking and bend. You feel it moving as it should. It's designed to with all the weight of the cars on it. Fascinating, fascinating experience. Anyway, got to take a break here a little long. Back in a second. Don't go away. I actually wanted to walk up the cables to get there, but they wouldn't let me, even though, like the painters of the bridge do, they clip you. There are handrails on those cables, but they wouldn't let me do that for insurance purposes, obviously. But I would have done it if they would have given me the go-ahead. So I took the elevator.